police officers have read it, what was your, they could have gotten away with it if they had kept their mouth shut, moment. I was asked to help keep peace while two probation officers searched a guy's house before everyone gets upset. In most jurisdictions, you have to submit to a search of your person and your home if you're on probation. During the search, a PO lifted the probationer's mattress and said monotonously, wow. The probationer got upset and said, yeah, it's fucking meth and a gun. Arrest me, I don't give a fuck. Turns out the PO found a huge dildo, but after the guy opened his mouth, the PO lifted the mattress more and found a bunch of individually wrapped grams of meth and a Glock 70. The PO said that seeing the dildo was enough for him to ignore the mattress but, because the guy said something, he kept looking. That guy's attitude and his need to open his mouth got him 10 years in prison. LPT how to hide your stuff. Former cop here, we always had a statement that we used if we ever got in trouble and it applies to anyone. No poly, no waiver, no statement. Basically, never consent to take a polygraph, never waive your rights and never make a statement. You may think you're doing yourself a favor by answering questions and trying to be helpful but more often than not you'll end up digging your own grave. Be polite about it but respectfully refuse anything until you've spoken to a lawyer. I'm pretty sure polygraphs aren't allowed in court anymore because people realize they don't work. I'm a police officer in the UK. It was about 2 a.m. which meant street lights were off. As I was patrolling, I saw a vehicle drive with only his side lights on. Spun around. Pulled them over. I asked for his license and it's a provisional. His co-pilot was 20 and didn't have a license and the vehicle didn't have L plates. This means he's driving otherwise than in accordance of his license and also driving with no insurance. Because as if he did have any insurance, driving otherwise than in accordance normally invalidates it. So, I got him in the back of my car to speak to him. Start writing out a traffic ticket for no insurance and was going to seize the car and let him off for driving otherwise in accordance. However, as I'm writing the ticket, he says to me, I shouldn't even be driving this car. My mate doesn't even know I took it. I just kinda pause. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. My mate lives just up the road and I was round his. He fell asleep so I thought I'd just take the car and go for a ride. Not me but my dad. My dad was in an army helicopter unit assigned to local police to search for marijuana plants being grown in the rural parts of my state in the 1980s. One day, they found a decently sized gaggle of marijuana plants located just off the property of a farm. They landed the helicopter on the farm and talked to the farmer, asking him if he knew that. Someone was growing weed near his property. The farmer got scared and immediately confessed that they were his plants. He was arrested by the police. Oddly enough if they farmer would have played dumb, the army and the police were just going to remove the weed and leave. No a police officer, but I do know of this house in my local village that was a notorious drug den. The police came to search the place but couldn't find anything. As they were leaving, the lovely owner yelled at them that they should brought the drug dogs. So yeah. They came back a few days later with the drug sniffing dogs and found huge amounts of drugs hidden away. Absolute morons. He wouldn't have gotten away with it, but a patron of the bar that my sister worked at many years ago was stopped by the troopers while driving along next to the highway, in the ditch. His explanation, officer, I'm way too drunk to be on the road. I said it was profiling. Turns out they were arresting everyone driving on the sidewalk that particular night. Ron White, I don't wanna be drunk in public. I wanna be drunk in a bar. They threw me out into public. Not a cop but a witness. During college, my friends and I would hang out outside and smoke hooker. Frequently we would invite strangers who pass by to join or campus police would casually chat with us as they made their rounds. So one time a group of freshmen walked past and asked to join. After about 15 minutes the campus police car rolls up and the freshmen get visibly nervous. We tell them calm down. The cops are chill. As soon as the cop gets out of the car, one freshman bolts and makes it about 20 feet before the cop tackles him. We all clap and heckle the kid. Upon searching him, the cop finds a bunch of weed. Then he says, you realize prior to running, I had no reason to be suspicious. I just wanted to talk to my friends over there and points at us. The cop ends up writing a ticket and sends him off. 
In college after an early football game we had a large group at my house. We were planning on partying but there was a really good game on so everyone was just sitting around watching the game. We were about 50-50 underaged, ages 20 to 22. There were a few people who had beers but the drinking had not started. People were flowing in steadily and I guess the neighbor saw the amount of cars and called the cops to file a noise complaint at 7pm. There was a knock at the door and someone said come in, and walks a cop. I survey the room to realize everyone who had a beer was over 21, except one. Just as the officer was about to speak she takes off and dives from the couch to behind the kitchen counter. The cop pauses shakes his head, said there was a noise complaint but he had been sitting outside for 10 minutes and hasn't heard a word, said to enjoy the game. Looks at the kitchen shakes his head again and walks out. Luckily, I lived in the town next door to the college or it would have been a rough night. I'm a nice guy, and I enjoy a chat, you'd be surprised how much this lowers someone's guard, stood in full uniform, people will just start telling you things that could get them in trouble, multiple times I had to tell people to shut up, it was usually petty things like where they hid their weed stash, that they'd got a bifter in their pocket for later, not really worth the time and effort to deal with with how steezed. We were, one time a guy really got himself in trouble by effectively telling me he had stolen property on him, I had to act on that one. Okay so we had a DUI accident where a guy kept driving straight into the woods into a tree because his GPS was predicting a future street. He walked back to his hotel room and left his check in papers in the car. So we go to the hotel and go to his room and knock on the door. He did not have to answer, but he did. He was pretty clearly drunk. I ask him if he had anything to drink since the accident. He did not have to answer, or he could have told us that he drank after the accident. He said, no I haven't had anything to drink since the accident, and where I'm from you have 24 hour to report a property damage only accident, so it wasn't even a hit and run. So as I'm locking the guy up he tells me he's a lawyer. I told him, I hope you're not a defense attorney, but in his defense, he was drunk. Not a cop. I had a roommate in college that was no friend of mine. He got in a fight at a bar and was kicked out. He tried to go back into the bar and got thrown out again. But a cop happened to be driving by the second time. Cop told him to relax or he was going to be arrested. He told the cop to arrest him. Cop handcuffs him and puts him in the back of the cop car. Roommate then started banging on the window. Cop then recuffed him with his hands behind his back. Roommate stupidity carried on for the next couple months. He was supposed to go to court over the whole thing, but didn't show up. Police showed up at his job, cuffed him and brought him to court. Judge told him he would have just received a slap on the wrist, but he now had to send him to jail for a couple days. He was scheduled to report to jail a week or two later, and he didn't show up for that either. By this time, he disappeared. I never saw the guy again. This is going to be buried but it's funny so here, I was a cop on an air force base in Alaska, three guys robbed our class 6 store, liquor, and we responded to the store but got caught in traffic at a light on the way, so we were sitting there with lights and sirens on trying to get people to move out of the way when the back door to the car ahead of us opens and a guy gets out and goes spread eagle against his trunk. Confused we get out to see what was up and realize that these were the robbers. Edit. Thank you for the silver. So after calling it in and making the arrests we told them that we had no idea they were who they were. The driver and front passenger were pretty upset with the backseat passenger. Absolutely never admit to any crime without a lawyer present. Just because you know you did it and the cops know you did it doesn't mean it'll hold up in court or that they'll think it's worth the time to prosecute it. You don't need them to think you're a good guy who made an understandable mistake. You need to stay out of a cage. Keep your mouth shut. The only word you should be saying is lawyer. The absolute best example of this has to be Dennis Rader aka the BTK killer. For those of you unfamiliar with BTK, it stood for bind, torture, kill and he was a notorious serial killer spanning several decades from 1974 until 1991 and he's responsible for at least 10 murders. Anyway, BTK went silent for a long time and nobody had heard anything up until 2004 when he started sending in letters to the police and media again. In 2005 he sends a letter to the police asking if he sends in a floppy disk will they be able to trace it. They tell him no, so the doofus sends them a disk. 
they are able to recover metadata from a deleted word document from the disk which contained his name and the church where he was president of their council. They were easily able to find him after that and he was arrested and eventually given 10 consecutive life sentences. He probably could have gotten away with all those murders if he would have just stayed silent. Currently watching Live PD, and the guy told the officer, I have caffeine pills in my back pocket. Gets them out puts them on the hood. Everyone's chill. Dude then comes clean and says it's Molly and the officers look at each other and go, do we even have a test kit for that? Other officer says, no. Dude's face just shows he should have kept his mouth shut. This is a gold sponge gar. It only appears once every 1 million sponge gar appearances. Like the video within 5 seconds for good luck. PG. On top, food chain, won't stop, new game, hot box that blue haze, one lock, two chains, no bras, two bays, mic drop, new stage, lights in my rear view, five cops, full race, faster than a Tesla, they say I'm exhausted, looking for success, like I'm crazy and lost it, higher than a jet, guess my weed is a rocket, the comments that my vids get are wild.